Welcome to Rhythm University. In this segment, we're going to plan. We're going to work on developing leading indicators that can drive results, which can then be measured by results indicators. So sometimes, you know, we are working really hard to try and get these results, but it feels like pushing a big, big rock. If you feel like you're pushing a big rock, there's really only two choices. Choice one is you can work harder, push harder. And choice two is you can work different. And so today we're going to use um, leading indicators to help us work a little different. So sometimes when the results feel like a really huge rock, a big, big weight, a leading indicator will help you to focus your energy on the right places so that when you push down, you drive those results with a lot less effort because it's much more focused energy. In Chapter 8 of the Rhythm Book, we have a four-step process to help you develop leading indicators. I'm going to go through that right now. You want to begin with the end in mind. You know, what's the business problem that you're trying to solve? What you want to do is focus on your goal. What you don't want to do is focus on measuring KPIs. This is one of the biggest pitfalls. Lots of people tell me, Patrick, I want to measure these KPIs. And I want to ask them why, what business problem are they trying to solve? They're not quite sure. So in step one, we want to make sure that you really focus on your business problem. Be really clear. What do you want to solve? Let's use an example of achieving a sales quota. So the business problem here is I want to achieve my sales quota. And then you want to know how you're going to measure that result. So let's say you're going to measure a result and your sales quota is about a million dollars in sales. So you need to have success criteria for a result. Red, yellow, green. If you have not done that or you're not sure how to red, yellow, green, you might want to watch the segment on red, yellow, green success criteria. So let's go ahead and red, yellow, green this. Let's say your goal is a million dollars. That would be green. Let's say your stretch goal is 1.25 million, and that would be super green. You don't. You need to make sure you don't perform under 750,000. That's the minimum level of performance, and that would be red. And yellow is in between red and green. Once you've done that, you've got your result indicator. So now let's dig deep with questions on how to get the leading indicator to push on the result indicator. Now this is critical. Most people don't ask enough questions. It's really hard to dig deep by yourself. So oftentimes you might need to get someone to help you. You know, it's not time for amateur hour. Get a pro to help you. So some questions could be like, okay, I want to achieve a quota of uh, of um, of a million dollars. How, how do we do that? Well, I need to look at my pipeline. Okay, well, how does your pipeline help you to predict? I look at the last stage. Great. So in this case, uh, what's the close rate of your last stage of your pipeline? Lots of people stop right here. I'm sharing with you that you want to dig deeper and try and figure out how to actually move things into the last stage of your pipeline. So if you had someone to help you, you would dig deeper. And the person would ask you, well, what would you do when your close rate, estimated close rate, is still less than your quota? Well, I don't know. I guess i got to find more opportunities. Okay, then what's your main constraint to moving more opportunities to the last stage? Well, let's just say it could be demos, number of customer demos. Okay, well, how is that coming along? And so from here, we get a stronger leading indicator of number of customer demos because this is the constraint in this example to getting more opportunities into the last stage and something that we can push on and affect. And then, of course, we red, yellow, green it. Let's say you want to do two demos a week. Well, that's green. And let's say four demos a week would be your stretch goal. That would be super green. Unacceptable zero. Well, that's red. And then yellow's in between red and green. Finally, you want to put these two indicators on a dashboard and use it for your 13 weeks. And so now you're ready to look at this dashboard and push on these two KPIs over the next 13 weeks, focusing on your leading indicator of number of customer product demos. Okay, so who's this dude? Well, everyone knows Michael Jordan, but who is he really? Ki who is he kissing? Well, that's Dean Smith. That's his coach. Now, Dean Smith is legendary for his winning record. Even though Dean Smith won a lot of basketball games, do you know how many times he actually talked about winning during the season? Only once. He shared the team that he wanted them to win only once at the very beginning of the season. He then focused them on three other things that got them to win. Working hard, working smart, and working together. So these three things were his leading indicators. If his team did, this, if his team did these three things well, they would win. He did not burden them with the result of winning. Rather, he focused them on the three levers that would help them to win. I want you to think of your leading indicators in the same way. 
So the key lesson here is to figure out what is the best leading indicator for you. In this example that we ran, we talked about sales. Could be number of customer demos, could be dollars in the last stage of a sales pipeline, also could be number of leads generated. It just depends on what problem you're facing, what constraint you have in sales. So every company is different. Figure out what's best for you. So in this segment, we talked about developing leading indicators to drive business results, uh, using leading indicators to drive those results, which are also measured by results indicators, and then putting both on a dashboard.